tragic twist has emerged in the shooting of an Australian man and his girlfriend on a deserted roadside in Canada. Two locals have revealed they stopped to help the young couple when their car broke down. No mobile service, about as remote as you get. A desolate stretch of the Alaska Highway and a young couple in a broken down van. They just pulled over to see if they needed help. Sandra Broughton and her husband Curtis, a mechanic, may have been the last friendly faces to see Australian Lucas Fowler and his American girlfriend, China Deese, alive. They were in deck chairs by their Chevy, saying the engine had flooded. They were having a picnic waiting for the van to um, flood, I guess. They seemed fairly confident and, and yeah. competent. They knew what the problem was, so um, I didn't really have any concern. Their unrecognisable bodies were found the next day. Unrecognisable? What have they done to them? Like, almost like an angel there to help them in a way. I thought they were just shot. Like, trying to be good and help them, but yet that same day, the complete opposite of humanity um, hurt them. Lucas Fowler's grieving father, Sydney Police Inspector Stephen Fowler, is now in Vancouver. It's just devastating, stating, and our heart goes out to the whole of her family, you know. We're just crushed. The Dees family suspects not a serial killer, but a robbery. ID was missing. Their daughter's passport found hidden in the van. I don't want it to happen to someone else. I do want to find the person that did it. Locals say police are asking about a car that may have been seen around the murder site. They believe the young couple was headed north. They stopped here to buy snacks. Well, they were actually fairly quiet people. They were really excited about their trip. They mentioned they were going north toward Alaska. With a tip to visit the popular Lied River Hot Springs. They broke down 20 kilometres away. Now flashing signs plead for drivers to recall any clues. As they expand their search for a killer, police have gone town by town, door to door, bringing them here to Fort Nelson, one of the last places the couple was seen alive. Hitchhikers are still thumbing for rides on this stretch, seemingly undeterred about a killer on the loose. U.S. Bureau Chief Ashley Mullaney is at Fort Nelson in Canada tonight. And Ashley, are detectives there any closer to a break in this investigation? Well, if police have any solid leads, Peter, they are certainly not making them known at this stage. They're doing everything they can to reassure the public, but uh, with no arrest, there is definitely an unsettling feeling in these neighbouring towns. Uh, whether this was a serial killer, whether it was an opportunistic killer or a robbery gone wrong, that person is still roaming free, Peter. Thanks, Ashley. Ashley Malini at Fort Nelson in Canada. A young woman is tonight in custody, accused of decapitating her mother after an argument. The crime was so horrific, psychologists had to be called in for police who attended the scene. What happened on this quiet suburban street has sickened police. This is Jessica Camilleri, hands bagged, covered in blood. Police say she used multiple knives to kill her 57-year-old mother, Rita, then decapitate her. Knock my door. Uh, her face was full of uh, uh, blood that time. And she said, yeah, um, I had a fight with my mom because uh, I killed my mom. Adding to the devastation, a four-year-old relative of the pair witnessed the horror. Yeah. There's no stepping away from the fact that this was a very horrific, um, a very significant attack. Neighbours today recalled a loving mother and daughter. It was really good. They have a good relationship. But relatives have told Seven News Jessica had long suffered mental health issues. Social media profiles oh, revealed the 25-year-old's obsession with horror movies. Mm. The accused had scratches on her face in court, with her hair hacked off. I couldn't even wash myself properly when I had to shower to get all the blood off to show them what happened, she told the magistrate. Jessica didn't apply for bail. Instead, her legal aid solicitor asked the court for a mental health assessment. It was granted, and she was this afternoon taken to Nepean Hospital. It's likely she'll appear in Penrith local court tomorrow, where we will learn the results of that assessment. Laura Banks, 7 News. There's some relief tonight for young sufferers of cystic fibrosis.